Okay, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at poly effects, kind of this weird hybrid effector MoGraph object uh, that while it's been around a long time, it still has some fun and interesting uses. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're gonna start here with just a regular cube that uh, the segments have been increased a little bit. So I've gone ahead and done that. Um, and once we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and create uh, a poly effects object, which can be found in our other MoGraph objects, where you find your clone or your fracture, all that good stuff. So like I said, it's kind of a, a effector MoGraph object hybrid. It is purple. It does need to be made a child of whatever it is you want it to work on. Now, it does have a couple of different modes, like a fracture object. It does have a transform to be able to separate um, different parts of this. Notice though, at this point, it's not the individual polygons. Though if we rotate, we can start to get individual polygons and then scale, okay, to scale. Now what's, I wanna point out about scale is that in order to make something disappear, unlike other MoGraph objects or effectors where we set the value to negative one here, it's actually zero, okay? Now we have an effectors tab. Uh, and we can also apply fields directly to this, which is kind of interesting. So for instance, I could come in with a spherical field here and now apply this. And this is where we're seeing the difference between full polygons and partial polygons. You can see how the polygons are kind of being stretched. Uh, they're not breaking away cleanly. If you switch this to partial polygons now, um, polygons that are only partially selected in our spherical field get separated. So you can kind of see how we can do some interesting things, uh, especially if you kind of work in scale by setting this to say zero, kind of gets rid of or defeats the purpose of using uh, position and rotation here. But now we're able to make certain parts of an object disappear and reappear um, by polygon. And that's really kind of where poly effects gets its name is we're able to apply unique effects or MoGraph type um, effects to individual polygons on an object instead of um, whole objects like we might do with a cloner, okay? Or a Voronoi fracture. Now, technically the, um, the regular fracture is similar and we will see that. Um, and while it does, uh, the fracture object can do pretty much the same things as the poly effects, uh, it's almost a little bit trickier and, and could potentially not work quite as well uh, as we'll, we'll see. So that's kind of a breakdown of just working with poly effects, um, especially when it comes to, you know, just adding a field here. You can, you can certainly do some interesting things um, based on whatever you do in the transform tab. Okay, taking this a step further though, um, let's set the scale here back to one and reset all of our transforms. So we're working with a cube again, awesome would be when we add effectors, because just like I mentioned previously, we can apply effectors now to individual polygons of an object as opposed to whole objects. Like I said, well, yeah, the fracture object does that as well. Um, it, there's an, an additional step uh, that I'll show you that makes it a little bit more troublesome. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and create a random effector, so random, um, now you can see it automatically got applied to uh, the poly effects here. So if that didn't happen, all you have to do is drag the random effector inside the effector list of the poly effects. And now we can work with fields in our effector. Once again, maybe I go with a spherical field here. Okay, make sure it's actually touching something or we're looking at it you can kind of see what we have going on here. So similar to what we were seeing before, but also a little bit different. I could come into the random here, add some rotation. Kind of make that a little bit more interesting. And now we're kind of seeing some of the things you can do with this. So rather than just making pieces disappear, we could have a move. In fact, we could almost kind of recreate the explosion deformer um, if we also had these scaled down to zero. Whether we uh, did that with the random effector, which could be a bit tricky, or if we added a plain effector um, on top of this. So um, yeah, that's 
kind of the basics of setting up and working with poly effects and being able to use an effector on the individual polygons. Uh, now, I also mentioned that, you know, we could do this with a fracture object. So uh, if I take the same cube and I'm going to delete the poly effects on it, I'm going to put it in a fracture. Okay. And you'll notice if I go and apply my random field, my random field, take my spherical field over, it doesn't do the same thing. You know, nothing's happening. I mean, that's happening. It's working on the whole cube, but not the individual polygons. And I swear the fracture object used to do this without you having to do it. Even if you switch the mode here to say explode segments or explode segments and connect, it still treats it like a single object. And um, making this editable doesn't fix this. Instead, what I found is you have to um, split this or separate uh, the individual polygons here. And that's the extra step I was talking about before um, that uh, could be problematic as you might run into issues fong-wise doing this on a more complicated object. Uh, it could make doing materials on an object like this a lot more tricky as well. So, um, you know, that might be why poly effects is the better way to go. Uh, to actually separate these polygons though, I need to go into polygon selection mode, select all of them, and find disconnect. And in my disconnect settings, I want to make sure I uncheck preserve groups. Now what that will do is separate my individual polygons, or at least it should have, um, though I'm not seeing this work correctly quite yet. So I think it's because this needs to be on explode segments now. There we go. And now we finally have the same kind of look. And you can see that as I just kind of pull this across. Uh, but like I said, you know, we could run into issues with this fracture now, whether it's um, with Fong shading on a more complicated object, perhaps applying materials to it. But ultimately, we kind of have the same result here. And, um, you know, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I think they both have their uses. Um, Poly effects in this case actually seems to be a bit simpler. And poly effects even has uh, this preserve font. So, um, you know, on a more complicated object, we have an, a way of fixing any font issues where the shading looks incorrect right here. Uh, whereas with the fracture, it could be a bit trickier. So I know that was a short video, but that's really all there is to the basics of poly effects. So uh, let me know if there's anything else you would like to see in a video and take care.